I'm heading west to Eagle Rock, a Southern California neighborhood bordered by mountains. This area attracts nature lovers who take an active interest in conserving parkland and promoting green living. Jeremy Levine is an architectural designer. His wife, Robin, runs a company that sells non-toxic home products. They've been married for six years and are the owners of two rowdy dogs, Samson and Jackpot. The couple is passionate about conserving natural resources, especially at home. Their challenge is how to upgrade their Eagle Rock home so it's less dependent on the city's water and power. Their solution, to install two water recycling systems for lawn and plant irrigation. One collects rainwater, the other recycles household water. They also plan to set up a full solar panel array on the roof. <laughs> Today I'm going to climb down to the couple's rainwater collection cistern, then climb up on their roof to put in the new solar panels. I'm going to help these guys plug in, turn on, and tune out the power company. What happens when you turn a building designer who's interested in going green loose on his own house? Gets wild. Let's check it out. Hi. Hey, how are you? Robin Levine. Hello, Robin. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. So, uh, rumor has it that your husband is a wild designer of green things. Yes, he's a green architect. <laughs> <laughs> very, very eclectic kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy transformed a dark Spanish adobe into an open, airy eco-haven. The way that Jeremy designs, we're able to have a modern house that stays with the language of California-style homes. He raised the ceilings, put in rows and rows of windows, and cut openings in the walls so that rooms could share light. And here's Jeremy. Hey, Steve. Good Your reputation you. precedes you. Is that true? Yeah. I hope not. That's wild and green. What is she saying about me? Bad things? No, no, no never, never. never. Yeah, we haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> she was just getting there when you walked in. Got it. Good, good timing. <laughs> Jeremy's latest project is recycling rainwater and household water to irrigate his garden. So this is our kind of bridge down to this big backyard. So what's going on here? You got a bunch of trenches in the back. Yeah. Right? So we got uh, three things going on. The first thing is we have a rainwater capture system that we're going to use. Yeah. So capturing the rain, we're going to filter that rain, and then we're bringing it down into a big cistern. I wanted to see the cistern. Come on down. So Jeremy took me down to the garden. Up with Francisco Lopez, his lead contractor, and Jenna DDA, an environmental engineer. They've both been involved in the design and construction of this rainwater collection system. That is. It's awesome. So all the rainwater is going to end up in here. Some of it's already in there. Yeah. How many gallons is this? Uh, we count it up. This is about 800 gallons. Well, Francisco, Which, this, sorry. Francisco dug this himself yeah. with his bare hands. Yeah, I was trying to get all the to get down, but <laughs> I can't reach it. I said, Francisco, come back. <laughs> I need you. I wanted to get a closer look at the sister. And there's only one way to do that. <laughs> the pit of death. Of death. Of death. Few men survive. Now, so this is going to fill up. Yes. This is your inflow. This is outflow. And this. That's for the pump. That's for the pump. Yeah. The way this works is rainwater comes off the roof and down a chain downspout. It goes through a series of pipes, is filtered, and fed into this big cistern. Then it's pumped into perforated piping buried in the couple's lawn. Perforated pipe right here, and it's going to be landscape fabric and gravel to prevent the holes from getting clogged. And really the water is just seeping over, so the water fills the bottom of the pipe, and then it kind of splashes out just gently over time, and seeps into the roots, and then there's no evaporation, which saves a lot of water. You're losing maybe 30% of your water when you just spray it to evaporation. On average, Jeremy and Robin can get about 13,000 gallons of rainwater off their roof each year. With proper filtration, they could run their whole house on that and plan to in the future. But for now, they're recycling water for their garden alone, and not just rainwater. They've started reusing their household water to feed their plants. In eco-speak, that's called gray water. Gray water 
is the water that comes out of your shower and your sink. And everything but black water. Everything but black water. Right. really ucky stuff Which that is, has poop in it. Right, sewage. So, <laughs> so if you're pulling water out yeah. of the shower, yeah. and it's going to dump into this That's filter right. that yeah. you're going to make up. This filter, right. This filter sifts out all the nastiness that gets sucked down the household drains. Hair, soap scum. Soap is really the problem for any um, garden system. You have to be really careful about what the kind of soap you use. Why is it a problem? Because uh, a lot of soap, cheap, cheaper soaps, have uh, chicken fat in them, actually. Really? Mm. So this is a, and so uh, this will allow this is a fat trap. This is more like a fat chicken trap. Chicken fat trap. Fat in hair. Yeah. Okay. Once the big stuff is filtered out, the water flows through pipes and into this box, where it's filtered again by sand. The sand removes the little things, like lint and dirt. Finally, the water drains into these planters for one last purification process. So this will fill up with water? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're creating a mini wetlands here. And then we're pulling this from one to the next to the next to the next. And these plants are designed to absorb the water. Exactly, to absorb not just the water, but also any residual toxins in the water. The filtration effect of those roots alone will polish the water. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This one? I love that term, polish the water. Yeah, it will. I only polish drink polished water. water, by the way. Let <laughs> yeah, James get me some polished water. This one? This is a flax. So it likes to have its feet wet. Like and it likes shade, which is one of the reasons why we're using it here. Because you're under shade here. Under a tree. Yeah. More flax. More flax. More more flax. All flax. All flax. Jeremy's found an inventive way to reuse his dirty water, purify it, and feed his plants. But not all of his water recycling projects have a practical purpose. Some just look cool, like this rain wall, which uses recycled rainwater. This is kind of a mad scientist's backyard. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> rain wall. All right. And the idea? The idea is that it's uh, an evaporative cooler. It kind of cools the space. So like those misters you see. In exactly. That's exactly it. You are a nut. All right. You are such a nut. I love it. <laughs> Jeremy may be a nut, but he's a clever nut. By recycling his rain and household water, he and Robin are much less dependent on the city's supply. And that's what they wanted. 